Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll be speaking about exporting project to PDF. So with exporting project to PDF, I've seen two ways in which guys do it. So some guys, they export the project to PDF and some guys, they print the project to PDF. I believe with printing the project to PDF, it's not the right way to do it. Yes, it works, but it's not the right way to do it. Reason is you don't get some of the ePlan functionalities when you just print to PDF. But when you export to PDF, you get some of the ePlan functionalities. Some of the ePlan functionalities that I speak about is, for example, in your PDF, when you print to PDF, is that you cannot use the interruption point. So when you click in PDF, the interruption point, it needs to lead you to where that interruption is actually going to. So it needs to work the head and the tail of the interruption point. So when you print to PDF, it normally doesn't work. So when you try to do that, it normally doesn't work. And usually when you try to search for certain words, like for example, line monitoring relay, and you have printed the project to PDF, usually you cannot search for such words. Sometimes it works when you try to search, but sometimes it just doesn't work. So with export to PDF, you can actually search even for words like Genitza. You can search for that original sign and so forth in your PDF. So if you export, you can just click the project and go to file. And right here, you can export. So you can click on export and you can export to PDF. But some guys, what they do is that they print to PDF. And right here, you can see it looks okay. When you print to PDF, you have 36 pages. So the project contains 36 pages and you can set some settings here. So basically with the settings, you can filter out which pages you don't want to have. So for example, maybe I don't have one to have page one, page two, three, and I just want to start at page four. So you can use some of the filters just like you do when you're printing out a Word document or something like that. So with export, you can just click on the export right here. And what happens is that it exports the project. So what happens is that it uses the settings. Normally by default, it will be here. So it will use these settings that come from your workstation. So your PC basically. So it will output in color as a default and it will use the print margins as a default and it will output the 3D models as a default as well. And right here, if you click on settings, you can see right here, you can output the language, output the size. And also if you click on print margins, it will output the margins right here. So you can see the position, it will be upper left. You can actually set these as well in your settings so that every time you try to export to PDF, you can just go here, click export. When this window pops up, you just say, okay, because you know the settings are by default correct. So to do that, you can actually go to file and under settings, you can just write here margins. And as you can see right here, underneath margins, you have PDF export, which is under user and right here you have output. So if I want to output to black and white, I'll set that. And every time I go to file, export, PDF, it will by default select black and white. And then you can check this checkbox to say use print margins. So basically if you go to here to print, it will use these print margins. So right here you have left. So left you can set it as two or maybe you can have it as three. As an example, I'll just have them all at three. So as an example, I'll just have all of them at three like that. And then I can say print in black and white. But I already did that here. And then what you can do is that you can select the directory where you want it to always be exported to. So for example, I can say I want my drawings to always be exported to my documents. So I'll select that as a default to say my drawings should always be exported to my documents. 
And then right here, you can use page filters. So you can filter which pages you want to always be printed or not printed. And then if you go to general, you can output according to the structures. So according to the way it's displayed here in your page navigators or according to your page type. So according to reports first, maybe you want to have the enclosure maybe first, or you want to have the multi or single line schematics first. So you can actually do that. So those are one of the settings that you can set when you export the PDF. So I'll just have them like that. Black and white is the default. And right here, I'll have them as three as the margin and so forth. So I'll just hit OK for that. And then I will now begin the export. So one of the things that you can also do, just not forget that one of the things that you can also do you can also export just one page. So you need to click on those page or that page that you want to export. So if I want to export these three like that, I'll just select those three. So I'll select page one, page 20, page 101. If I want to export just the structure, I can select just this location designation, the power enclosure. If I want to export the whole project, I can select the whole project. So that's the same with uh, printing. So you can print and select which pages do you want to print out. So if I do this, I can just select this one right here, the power enclosure, that's the one we want to export. Go to export, click PDF export, and right here you can see by default, it says it's going to my documents. So I can change it even from here, I can overwrite this, but it just says by default, this is where it's going. And right here, you can select the name, so I'll just write PDF and then right here, I can say output black and white. So you can see it's already selected black and white. I can maybe just say color, overwrite it like that. And right here, it uses my print margins. It uh, allows me to output 3D models. And right here, you can see it's not checking that checkbox to say apply to the entire project because I'm just outputting the power enclosure. So after that, if you go to settings, you can see your print margins, just like we did them. They actually saying it's all of them, it's three, and you are able to change it from here as well. So I'll just click OK to that and have it in color, yes. And I'll say OK, and it will start exporting. And once it's done like that, you can actually see it underneath my documents. So it's right here. So I can just open it and right here, it's now open inside my PDF reader. So you can see right here, this is the drawings that we exported. So you can see them right here. So even with the interruption points, if you just click there, you can see that it leads you to the next page. So if you click on this one, or maybe I'll just click on the next one, you can see it leads you to the next page leads you to the next page and that's the end. So you can actually use this functionality as well inside your PDF reader. So you are able to use your interruption points. But if I do this and I go to file and right here, I'll say print and it doesn't matter. I'll just print the whole project. And right here, I'll save it underneath this. But I'll just say it's print PDF, say OK to that. And now it will start printing the PDF. And then I'll try to open it. Once it's done printing to PDF, I'll try to open it in my documents. So you can see right here, it's underneath my documents. That's the print to PDF. And that's it being displayed there. You can even see the margins. They're not actually the same as how we set them in our settings. So it's quite different. If you go to this one, you can see your print margins for the cover page. It's actually that three that we set, but right here, it's not taking those settings. And then if you go to one of the pages that has the interruption points, you can see it's not working, so we cannot use that functionality of the interruption points. So that's why printing to PDF for me, it's not the good idea. With export to PDF, 
it's much better because you can use those functionalities. You can use the functionalities of the interruption points. So always export to PDF and not print to PDF. You can see right there, I'm not able to use those functionalities for the interruption points. And then if I go to ePlan, usually what you see right here is that you see your invisible texts. So these are invisible right here. And you can see right there, we have some text that's invisible. So usually with your invisible, you are able to hide it so that it doesn't get printed. And sometimes you are able to make sure that it gets printed. So sometimes, for example, it is being visible and you want to remove it from not being visible, you are able to change that inside your settings. So to do that, you can just go to file and then go to settings. And underneath here, I'll just search for show invisible elements. And right here, you can click on print or export invisible elements. So it will take the two of them, whether you're printing or you're exporting, it will show the invisible elements. So if I click it and I say, okay, and right here, I'm gonna export this one. So I'll export the power enclosure, click on PDF export, and right here, I'll just give it another name, PDF, just say a thousand. Just do it in color, say OK. And then once it's done, I'll go to my documents and it should be this one. I'll just open it. And right there you can see the first thing is that it's showing those invisible lines there, right there. It's showing those invisible symbols and you can see all the invisible elements right there. Even here, you can see the invisible elements. And right there, you also see the invisible elements right there. So I don't know why you would want it to show, but it can show like that if you want it to be visible. So with this one, it's invisible. You're not able to see it. But with this document, you are able to see it. So it sometimes it can be distracting because it shows with every page that you have, it will show those invisible elements. So that's it for exporting to PDF and I'll see you guys in the next one.